Hello, everyone. Uh, so today in this session, we're going to talk about uh, breastfeeding assessment form. Uh, I do recommend that this form uh, we should fill out uh, while uh, mother is in the hospital uh, during PNC time. Uh, she's generally in the hospital anyway between 24 to 48 hours. Uh, depending upon, uh, you know, uh, which area she comes from. Uh, but by and large, you know, they are there till at least 48 hours or so. Okay. And uh, this particular form will uh, tell us whether she's uh, capable of breastfeeding her baby or not uh, when she goes home. Okay. And uh, what I experienced uh, from our uh, uh, FMCH days that uh, babies who had good latch, uh, babies who had good positioning, uh, those babies were definitely gaining good weight. But babies who had poor latch, who were just nipple latching, mothers were not holding the baby properly, those babies were gaining less than about 25 grams uh, weight gain per day. And, you know, and those babies were the one which we were not seeing good uh, results on the growth chart. Uh, so what we did, uh, basically, once we started using cross little hold in our program, you know, we just added few points in this uh, WHO breastfeeding assessment form. So now we call it modified uh, breastfeeding assessment form and uh, extremely important. I also recommend to use this form uh, not only during uh, uh, hospital time, but when baby goes home in the community. So if you are running NGOs, if you're uh, part of a government, uh, you know, uh, organization, uh, I would definitely recommend that you use this form at least for first 10 days or so okay uh, now what we do in us is once the baby go home in us generally by and large baby goes home by 24 hours okay so uh, on day two or 48 hours of age uh, they come to uh, to the doctor uh, for check so for weight check they come for they also come to check for jaundice okay i'm not going to talk about jaundice here but i will talk about weight uh, and then we continue to see that baby every 24 to 48 hours depending upon the weight okay and also jaundice of course uh, but if suppose the weight gain is tremendous and baby is not putting on weight obviously we know that uh, you know the latch is not good or mother is not feeding on time or all that you know so this form will kind of tell you uh, what is wrong with the baby Okay, and the mother, not just the baby, but basically the breastfeeding, uh, you know, the breastfeeding techniques and breastfeeding counseling. Uh, so what I recommend is first you tell mother to show how she is breastfeeding. Okay, because this is a breastfeeding assessment form means you are just watching the mother how she's breastfeeding, and then you're taking uh, whether it's correct or whether it is wrong, okay? So here on the left-hand side, you take the observed favor favorable behavior, and if it's not favorable, you will take it over here. I'll go through each and every point, but uh, this is what I recommend, okay? And suppose you're seeing the baby every 24 to 48 hours. If weight gain is good, say around 30 grams, 35 grams, even 40 grams. In fact, I recommend 40 gram weight gain. Then, you know, you don't need to see that baby very often. Maybe then uh, as per your HPNC uh, guideline, then you can see the baby, you know, as and when. Um, if you're in private practice, then, you know, maybe at two weeks you want to see again and then probably at uh, six to eight weeks for the first dose of vaccination okay uh, but at least for first 10 to 12 days till you are confirmed that my baby is gaining 30 to 40 gram weight gain per day uh, please see this baby every frequently very very frequently very important for those first 10 days when mother is learning to latch the baby okay so let's see what we're going to examine so the first thing you're going to examine you're going to examine general examination of the mother so you want to see whether the mother looks happy healthy comfortable whether she's enjoying so that's what you want to see right a lot of time when mothers come to us they are like very stressed sometimes they, cr they cry sometimes they are sad you know uh, sometimes they're unhealthy they are their fever you know so you want to look at the general health of the mother whether she's comfortable or not uh, or whether she's unhealthy sick you, you know of course if she looks unhealthy you want to take it over here okay uh, 
if mother is relaxed sitting straight with the back support so while she is breastfeeding you have to examine that also okay this are basically checklist so again in uh, us we use all the checklist so uh, pretty much your know, who has also created checklist but we have just added few more points okay so here you want to see how mother is sitting her posture uh, whether she is sitting with tense shoulder whether she is leaning over the baby whether she is kind of bending forward you know uh, without any back support because once you are filling out this form you will know exactly what points that you're going to counsel her okay and that's why you will not miss a single point so you don't have to remember a lot of those points you you have the checklist ready so just make copies you know and then use it in your program okay the third point is whether baby is being held uh, securely or not or close to her or not okay so you want to see that also whether baby is close enough to the mother or not okay uh, also you want to look at the confidence level because a lot of time now mothers they don't feel confident especially in first few days so you want to look at the confidence level also whether she's mother is holding the baby nervously and whether baby is kind of a little bit far from from the mother okay then you want to see whether she drank some water or not so of course you know a lot of time when she used to come to clinic she she didn't carry water or sometime we didn't have water so obviously she didn't do that but you know uh, in ideal situation you want to see whether she remembers to drink water or not okay uh, then also you want to look at if mother is wearing loose clothes or not while breastfeeding because as i told you in my previous session that a lot of these mothers what they do is they just kind of lift up their bra you know and then tight uh, clothes and then you know all the pressure comes on their breast okay so you want to kind of tick mark that also because you will have to tell her if she if she is not wearing uh, loose clothes if she is wearing tight clothes then once you tick it over here at the end of uh breastfeeding session you know assessment session uh, you will know what all things to tell her okay now once the mother's examination is done then you want to look at baby okay so baby whether baby looks healthy or not uh, whether baby looks sick uh whether baby's alert uh baby sleepy you want to look at that also whether baby keeps sleeping whether very sleepy child okay whether baby turns and searches for mother's breast uh whether baby looks disinterested so you want to look at general overall picture of the baby also okay then the breast examination is important breast examination what are you going to look at you're going to look at whether the breast are soft whether they are filled before breastfeeding or not so whether there is any milk or not you want to look at that okay uh sometime what happens that uh, breast becomes very hard they become very engorged so you want to look at that also whether breast are engorged or not okay uh, breast tissue is healthy rounded appearance you know that also you want to see uh, in breast examination the breast is stretched drop uh, uh, drooped you know uh, bruised cracked any red redness any abscess any inflammation tenderness does it uh, hurt or not so all that you will have to look at uh, breast also uh, then uh, in early part of uh, breastfeeding uh, you will see that there will be milk ejection okay now generally we don't see milk ejection after maybe probably post 6 weeks or so you know because what happens that once the milk is adjusted as per baby's requirement you know you don't necessarily feel a lot of milk uh, uh, gushing out when the let down reflex occurs okay so but in initial days and first 10 12 days you'll definitely see as soon as she starts breastfeeding you will see that the other side of the breast is leaking too okay those are signs of uh, milk ejection uh, and there is no sign of milk ejection then i mean you know obviously you want to make sure that uh, psychologically mother is doing okay or not because i want suppose if she is very uh, you know uh, what do i say uh, kind of uh, scared or lack any confidence or she is stressed about something then she will not uh, be able to have milk ejection okay or if she is in pain or she has a lot of cracked nipples you know she will not be able to see uh, milk ejection okay then you want to look at the position now in my last session i went through a uh, detail about uh, positioning of the baby so again i have taken those exact same points uh, for uh, for here also for this form so here you want to look at mother's kind of body is close to baby's body so basically tummy to tummy this is what uh, that you know one of the point of positioning whether baby's tummy is touching mother's tummy also all right and if uh, if it's not then basically the body is probably twisted you know the stomach is lying upward towards the sky okay and baby is probably held too far 
baby's head back hip and leg is supported in straight line okay so not only in the straight line but you want to make sure that they're fully supported and which is pretty it is definitely uh, possible in uh, cross riddle hold uh, only shoulders heads are supported and baby's body is twisted okay so you want to make sure that uh, you know uh, you look at uh, very very important examination again is look at the positioning of the baby okay uh, those four points are as i had mentioned to you earlier four points are really important uh, that's what we are going through it right now then third point is your nair of the nose so nair of the nose nair of the nose is in the line of nipple so make sure that the nose doesn't come uh, right in front of the nipple it should be nair of the nose okay so nair of the nose coming in front of the nipple uh, lot of time what happens i again explained to you in my last session is that if the nose is coming directly on the nipple or if the nose is too high up you know too lateral to the nipple uh, lateral means more on the side like this because baby is in a horizontal position right so uh, if baby is too high up the nipple then what would happen that uh, baby will have to flex the neck okay so you want to make sure in that situation what you do you just pull the baby more towards the other side so the neck will get flexed okay so that's important uh, also you want to make sure that uh, when mother brings the baby Uh, to the breast the chin is forward chin is for chin forward means the neck is backward so so the neck is extended backward this is chin forward okay so you want to make sure that mother brings the baby chin forward uh and of course a negative sign you will see that uh, the chin does not come forward the whole face comes to uh, at the same time okay so the chin does not come forward it ba baby comes just like that straight okay all right uh baby's face is completely towards mother's breast now this is very important point because you know uh, somehow i see all the all the mothers and even healthcare workers they have this tendency to tell uh, mothers or you know they they put the baby more the face is more towards mother's face you know and uh, that will not give a good attachment so just make sure that baby's face is looking directly at the breast and not looking up okay so this is another point that you want to mention okay now uh, here there is another point which i have put in is basically about if baby is feeding on the right side upper lip is at 9 o'clock position and lower lip is at the 3 o'clock position so suppose this is my right side okay so i want to make sure that uh, when i bring the baby to my right breast uh, you know the the upper part the upper lip will be more at a 9 o'clock position and the lower lip will be at a 3 o'clock position okay so and in this position your lips are completely vertical and this vertical uh, lips are important because you will be holding your uh you know uh, mother will be holding the breast in a 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock uh, position okay so you want to make sure that in that position your lips at lips upper lip is right in front of the uh, thumb and your low, uh, lower uh, uh, your uh, thumb is in front of uh, fingers okay so in that position uh, they have to be parallel so obviously you know both of them have to be at 3 o'clock and uh, you know upper part should be at 3 o'clock and the lower lip should be at the uh, Nine o'clock position. Um, okay, and then uh, about the latching part. Latching. Uh, while actually, one more thing I want to also mention to you while we're talking about three o'clock and nine o'clock position. Suppose if baby is kind of uh, oblique. Okay, so in an oblique position, you will notice that the upper lip will be at around say ten o'clock position on right side, and the lower lip will be at five o'clock position. So you you want to make sure that they are not oblique or they are not in a in a different angle. You know, just keep the baby absolutely horizontal so the lips fall on three o'clock and nine o'clock position. Okay, all right. Now let's talk about uh, latching. part uh, latching and uh, you know mouth positioning uh, not mouth positioning but basically kind of suctioning of the suctioning action of the mouth uh, so in latching basically you want to make sure that your mouth is wide open minimum 120 degree so we recommend between 120 to 160 degree but minimum should be at least 120 okay uh, mouth is not open believe me my in my experience when babies did not open their mouth wide those baby landed up only on nipple and babies did not have enough uh, you know uh, suctioning of uh, this thing so the latch was not good latch was very superficial so uh, that's important that you tell mother to wait till baby uh, has that uh, big wide mouth then only latch the baby okay 
Uh, second point in latching is basically uh, look at the lower lip. Okay. Uh, now remember, I told you that you have to examine the latch. Okay. I don't see many healthcare workers or medical officers examining the latch just because they are not used to it. I don't blame them, but just make sure to, it's like, you know, how in, uh, uh, in medicine, we always examine the physical examination is very, very important, right? So while you're actually examining the latch, just by looking at the mouth, you won't know. Okay. You have to put, basically, you'll have to examine by pressing the breast where the lower lip is, okay, you deeply kind of push that breast inside and look at where that lower uh, areola, lower uh, lip is, okay. So here the lower lip is at the border of areola or on the breast when the areola is small, okay. Uh, why, like a lot of time, you know, there are different sizes of areola. So if you have small areola, then your lower lip will be coming on the breast. If you have a big areola, then by and large, you'll see that the full lower areola is in the mouth. And the, so the lip is sitting at the border of areola. Okay. And in uh, a negative behavior, you will see that lower lip is sitting just below the nipple. Or it will, may not be just below the nipple, but it will not cover the full areola latch. Okay. So this is important uh, that what you're looking at. Then third point is, uh, I find it <laughs> kind of very crucial in uh, my practice. I want to make sure that when the baby's latch, Baby so deeply attached that the lips and uh, your uh, uh, you know chin is not at all uh, visible. Okay, that means you have a very deep attachment. So what you can do is you tell mother to push that baby more into the breast so that you know the full breast kind of covers the lip and the chin. But when do you tell that? only when there is a deep attachment because if suppose if baby has a poor attachment suppose baby is a shallow attachment and baby is only latching on the nipple you will see that uh, when you push it you may not realize that it's only small mouth like 45 degree and it's only nipple which is latching so that's why it's important to examine that latch with your eyes okay and in that examination three things are important okay one is how big is the mouth where exactly is the lower uh, uh, areola and lower lip, okay? And then also, once, once you're done with that, you want to make sure that baby's very deep enough, close, close to mother, okay? So that the lip and the chin is not visible. In WHO, it only recommends the chin is not visible, but it's what I've noticed that babies who are much closer to mothers, those babies are definitely gaining more weight, okay? All right. Uh, but then another point, which is uh, I've mentioned over here, baby grasps the lower part of viral in the mouth and the upper viral is seen with the lower lip. Okay, so here this what I'm saying is uh, that, you know, again, this is uh, one of the WHO uh, point of good latch is that because the lower illa is in the mouth, obviously you will see upper illa outside, okay? So this is called asymmetrical latch. So asymmetrical latch means that low, upper illa is out, you can see, through your naked eyes, while well, a lower area is in the mouth. Obviously, you cannot see it. Okay, so that's your uh, important. Another thing is also that uh, upper lip, when you have a good attachment, upper lip is sitting just at the border of nipple. Okay, and the lower lip is sitting at the at the areola border. So that's uh, that's what I've mentioned over here. When there's a good attachment, the cheeks are rounded and there is no dimple. Okay, now this is one point that I want to discuss a little bit further, because many times you would see that babies have dimple. So when they when they breastfeed, they're having like dimple. Now, once you see dimple, then there are three things which could go wrong. Okay, which are the three things which I again have mentioned in last session. First is nipple latch. Only nipple latch, even though baby is very deep, like, you know, close to the mother, uh, with that, uh, you know, uh, uh, superficial latch, which is your nipple latch, baby will have dimple. Second thing, if baby is uh, having a lot more upper areola in the mouth. So you have no, you will definitely notice that, you know, when you examine, you say, oh my God, this is upper areola is much more in the, in the mouth. So that's when you will see that baby is having, uh, you know, dimpling of the face. And uh, third thing is if baby is too far. So even though the lower area is there in the mouth, but if baby's too far, you can see the lips very uh, uh, clearly, even those baby will have, you know, uh, kind of dimple in the cheek. So remember those three points. If you're seeing dimple, 
something is wrong. Okay, you need to get that. Of course, I don't recommend to delatch the baby every time. Suppose if baby has a good mouth opening and if baby is uh, just a little bit far, farther, further away from the areola, you just push the baby in. Okay, as long as the mouth is big and the lower lies in the mouth. But if there is only nipple feeding, if if upper lies in the mouth, you know, uh, then I may delatch. Now, one more thing I may do if the upper lies in the mouth, if the if the face is the if the mouth is open 120 degree, then I may just pull the baby a little bit towards the other side, you know, to see if a baby can glide and try to get lower lie in the mouth. But you know, I mean, it depends. You know, that's all basically that will come with the experience when you start uh, helping mothers. But see what works, okay? All right. Now, uh, another point which uh, which I wanted to mention about, you know, uh, basically as soon as, you know, uh, babies latch, then you will see uh, kind of babies, you know, baby will start sucking. So you will see the tongue movement a little bit. Okay. And then, you know, obviously babies calm, babies alert. You want to see, make sure that babies alert at breast because many times we see that a uh, lot of those babies, they sleep. You know, mother feel that, oh, baby's still feeding, but it's more of a non-nutritive sucking and they keep, you know, and mothers get tired, babies get tired. I do not, uh, you know, I, while baby is active is sucking and if baby's tired, you know, not tired, I say, if you feel that baby has slowed down a little bit, you know, and you feel that baby is not now getting more milk and just kind of relaxing or just resting, you wake up the baby. Okay, because I don't want the session to last for hours and hours because it, you mothers will get so tired, you know, when baby's sitting there for like half an hour, one hour, two, two hours, you know, mothers, they don't know what to do. So I like that active, active sucking. Okay, so what you do, you wake up the baby. Okay, immediately, like, you know, as I mentioned in my earlier session, you wake up the baby, if baby's still not getting up, you delash the baby by putting finger in the mouth, you make the baby sit. Again, in my experience, I've seen that once you make the baby sit, uh, you know, I, uh, uh, again, you know, I've shown the technique uh, immediately within a minute or two, baby will open the eyes. OK, they will open the eyes, they look around and they'll open the eyes. And then again, you can put the baby uh, back. OK, now when you put the baby back, you want to make sure that, you know, uh, mothers know that whether hind milk is there or not. Then again, we have explained. Uh, but, uh, you know, make sure that uh, baby completely finish on one side. But that active baby is very important. So if baby goes to sleep again, again, you put the baby in a sitting position, feed the baby. Okay. Sometimes it may take two or three times that you want to wake, you may have to wake up the baby. But believe me, those babies, you know, they finish it fast. You wake up the baby, feed them probably as, as, as long as they want. But if as soon as the active uh, sucking slows down, you remove the baby. Okay. Uh, and that's what, like, I've seen great results with just active sucking, you know, and some of these babies are so alert and so active by four minutes, five minutes, they are done, you know, and if they're done, and if you feel there is no breast milk left on that side, just, you know, kind of put the baby in a sitting position, you know, make sure that baby has, if baby has burping, which is good, but if they don't, you know, don't worry, because if you have a good latch, baby will not have a lot of sucking of air. If you don't have a lot of sucking of air, they will not burp. So do not freak out if they don't burp. Please don't worry. Okay. All right. Now you want to look at the important counseling points of breastfeeding. What are the important counseling points that uh, you guys already know? But again, I'm going to just go quickly go uh, or go through it. Uh, mothers know how to check the latch of the baby. Okay. So again, uh, you know, obviously we teach uh, healthcare workers, we teach nurses how to check the latch, but it's important that mothers know because once mother goes home, uh, she won't have a nurse to check the latch. Okay. So teach this technique to mother also to how to check the latch. Okay. Uh, and if mothers don't uh, do the latch check you you mark it over here on the right hand side that a mother's they don't know or she forgot uh, because that's an important point every time that she latches the baby at least in the first few days she has to examine okay because once she knows uh, what it is like then she doesn't have to keep doing it but she has to she has to know what it is all right all right then uh, when she puts her uh, breast when she holds the breast, okay, uh, she'll have to, you'll have to make sure that her fingers are parallel to lips, 
Okay. Now here I've made it very common to all the holes, whether it is cross cradle, cradle, whether it is a sideline hold or blade back or whatever hold that you would want to recommend. Uh, you know, just make sure that uh, when mother is pressing the breast, it's parallel to baby's lips. Okay. So if baby's in a completely horizontal position, the lips will be vertical. So you want to make sure that your uh, fingers are also vertical, you know, or, or just a parallel to baby's lips. Okay. All right. And uh, uh, a negative behavior, what you will see is that uh, you will see that uh, mother is not keeping her fingers parallel to baby's lips. Uh, what she's doing is she's keeping it perpendicular. And most likely, believe me, in your, uh, your practice or in your program, you will see mothers are always holding their breast, not in parallel to lips, but they are, you know, perpendicular. Okay, it's like eating your burger, not like this, but eating your burger like this. You would... Anybody would laugh if you do that in when you go to say fast food joint to eat your sandwich or something and you're not eating this when you're eating this way. Okay. So, I mean, we would make a fool of ourselves. So I think we will do the same if we allow mothers to do that. Okay. All right. Then uh, second point is basically uh, three fingers away. Yeah. So one thing you want to make sure that when mother is holding the breast, uh, make sure that, you know, her fingers are three fingers away from from nipple so it's not too close so it's not too far and it's just a tip which is uh, touching the breast and not the whole finger okay because the whole, if the whole finger touches then those fingers will come in the way okay so it should be like a really round shape the dip of the u should be at six o'clock position okay and it should be just a tip touching and the tip of the finger should be at six, uh, three o'clock and nine o'clock position not at uh, above or not below okay exactly three o'clock and nine o'clock position okay we are just standardizing the process so it becomes easier for everybody to understand all right now mothers know early hunger cues so of course you know some of these questions you can ask that uh, when do you breastfeed the baby so uh, just Kind of make sure that you know whenever you have explained her all these important counseling points that she remembers all these points so while she's nursing you can ask all these questions so that you know whether she knows or not okay so what are those early hunger cues squirming opening of the mouth putting finger in the mouth all that putting finger in the mouth becomes a little bit later so it will be mid hunger cues but mainly squirming and looking at the breast and all that okay and then if she says oh i feed the baby when baby's crying that means uh, it's a uh, negative behavior all right then uh, you also want to look at if mother is waiting for baby to open the big mouth so that's important uh, so 120 degree and how does she open the mouth because that's another uh, point you know which uh, which i explained is that she has to brush the upper lip with uh, her nipple and that's how baby will open the mouth okay because a lot of time mothers don't know that so they keep waiting and they keep waiting so uh, just remember to tell her to just basically brush the nipple with upper uh, upper lip okay all right and you know one more thing which i want to reiterate again which i mentioned earlier also that tell mother to be ready you know, hold the head properly, hold the breast properly, keep the baby very close. As soon as baby opens the mouth, you know, 120 degree, just immediately kind of uh, glide that mouth in the uh, in the breast, okay? Because a lot of time what mother, mothers do, sometimes they're on the phone, sometimes they're talking to somebody, sometimes, I don't know, they are not focused. So baby opens the mouth and she doesn't do anything. As soon as baby closes the mouth, she starts pushing the baby in the, in the breast, okay? So tell her to be very kind of wide awake, and uh, alert and then just be ready all right <clears throat> okay now how many times to breastfeed so you have mentioned baby feeds the 10 to 12 times in 24 hours uh, this is important because again you know we always say how, how many times in a day how many times at night so don't use the word day because when you use a day word that means it's probably 12 hours from 6 a.m to 6 p.m okay so always use the word 24 hours so again, you know, just uh, tell her 10 to 12 times in 24 hours. Now, after about a couple of months, uh, two, three months, they may not feed 10 to 12 uh, times. Then they'll go down to eight times. Then they'll go down to six times. Okay. But at least in first couple of months, I would say six to eight weeks, it's important to feed baby 10 to 12 times because we are catching up on growth. Most of the babies are born small. Okay. All right. Uh, then, of course, uh, 
night time feeding so night time feeding i have written over here that uh, if baby feeds three to four times at night and if baby is feeding less time you know that's your negative behavior okay then mother feeds your baby completely from one breast before switching to other so that hind milk is important and uh, it's also it's it's crucial to tell mother how to examine the hind milk so here i've given one point uh, that uh, she kind of she has to express milk a little bit and see whether it is watery or it's uh, uh, you know, thick. And even if it is thick, if it's coming with force, that means that uh, hind milk is still there. Okay. So that it's important to ask mother that how does she examine, how does she know whether she has fed milk from, from the back part of the uh, breast or not? Okay. All right. Uh, Another thing which is uh, I've asked over here, uh, whether mother knows a technique of burping the child. Now, there are some new latest uh, recommendation is not to burp the child, no need for burping the child and all. But, you know, in my experience, to be frank, uh, many times baby do burp, uh, especially if uh, the latch is not good. Uh, so, you know, I, like I, I do recommend burping the baby. But more than that, you know, when you put the baby in a sitting position, the biggest advantage, what, what I've seen is that all the sleepy babies, they become very alert and active. They become so alert and active and they are ready to breastfeed again. Okay. So just remember that to kind of uh, burp the baby, you know, burp the baby in just a couple of minutes. You can try baby's not burping. Just leave the baby, but <clears throat> make sure the baby is awake. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is another point I mentioned about waking up the baby. So the three ways you can wake up the baby, one by stroking the legs. Okay. One by stroking the back or the spine or one by kind of, putting the baby in a sitting position, okay? So she needs to know all these three, four points of how to wake up the baby, okay? And then, of course, uh, how to manually express milk. Because uh, remember, I mentioned to you that mother need to check whether she has uh, hind milk left or not. So in that uh, in that process, she will have to do a little bit of manual uh, expression of milk. So uh, remember, it's press, compress, release. So you press it towards the breast, press, compress release so it's you know you, you're basically pushing the breast a little bit inward towards the chest okay and then you basically you don't kind of you don't uh, milk the breast you you're not milking the breast okay you're just basically pressing the breast towards the chest inside again then press compress and release okay so that uh, we have a beautiful tutorial which uh, uh, it will come uh, you know and in, in our next this session particularly uh, so okay so this is our breastfeeding assessment form once you have tick on left hand side say all your ticks on left hand side and your baby is growing to 30 to 40 grams my goal is 40 grams okay so if your baby is gaining 40 grams a day and then all the click on the left hand side you are fine okay then you don't need to maybe if you want to see baby once in a couple of days just to make sure uh, then you can do it but if baby is uh, gaining weight you know a couple of times you see uh, baby is gaining weight and uh, all mothers know everything you know you need to see baby for even one month two months so you mothers know babies know what to do okay but again of course we'll follow what hpnc guideline is so in hpnc guideline you see, do you do see baby at day three day seven 14 21 10 28 days you know so although obviously in government uh, this thing you will be checking those babies on time uh, but you know again uh, don't wait from zero to seven days or 10 days because those 10 days is time when mother is learning breastfeeding so if you can teach her properly then look at the baby growing fast because they grow highest in first three months of age you know uh, and then to catch up is very very difficult later on okay so try to get that uh, catch up growth going as soon as possible one more thing that uh, we have field experiences again i'm getting a lot of uh, uh, calls from a lot of pediatrician that if they teach this proper technique of latching uh, right from birth then you know by day three day four these babies have have already gained birth weight and they are on the upward trend so by the time like you know by day seven they have they already start gaining 200 uh, sometimes 300 gram weight gain and in fact who if you look at a who growth chart who table uh boy child they gain 200 gram uh, by day seven okay by day seven 200 gram weight gain okay and a girl child they gain about 100 gram by day seven okay so if your baby is not gaining weight uh, 200 gram boy child by day seven that means something is wrong that means what is wrong 
by and large is breastfeeding factors okay so that means you have like you have not focused on breastfeeding latching and that's why your baby is not growing well okay and that's that's unfair unfair okay all right so thank you so much and uh, i'm going to close the session now and we will go with the next one okay thank you